Well, good morning, everyone. Well, afternoon. I've already been told off once by this. But yeah, good afternoon, everybody, and a very warm welcome to QuickBooks Labs panel show. The new Pals concept is designed to keep you in touch with everything to do with QuickBooks and it's all about the world of other accounting software as well but also with me is the added extra opportunity for some of the great minds of the industry to talk to our audience about what's going on and what views they have to share. We still aim to go live within the first week of each month we may have failed that a little bit this time but we do normally try and go live as uh, best we possibly can um, at the beginning of each month and the idea then is that we come to your beautiful ears and we give you all the information you need to do about QuickBooks Online mm -hmm. and boy do we have some stuff to talk about today we've got some controversy we've got some some changes that people aren't going to be happy about some changes that people are going to be happy about and ultimately we're going to make sure that you are going to know everything that's happened in the world of QuickBooks. I am one of your hosts I'm Patrick Lee Child Accountant and owner of a county firm called Boffix QuickBooks said by Training Fancy Lego and that QuickBooks chap on YouTube. And with me today, we've got Johan Gori. Hello, Johan. How's it going? Good afternoon, Aaron. I'm very well. Thank you. Yourself? Yeah, I'm all right. And we have Ash with us as well, who has just come directly from training QuickBooks itself. So, how are you doing? Are you kind of talked out yet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I've, I've literally just closed one browser and opened up another. So, yes, I'm here. I'm a little bit of controversy, so I'm eager to learn what you're sharing. Excellent, excellent, good. So with that then, let's make sure we all have everyone in tune in terms of what this is all about. So we try and go live at our regular time, 4.30 UK time or 10.30 US time. So if you can listen back to this at a later time, then why not think about joining us live? That way you can get involved with the show and ask us everything using the chat box. We've got people already there commenting away like Leanne Hill. Hi, Leanne. Hope you're doing well. Um, and also we've got other people lurking around as well. So if you do have any questions, don't forget to drop it in the chat box and we'll get to them towards the end of the show, or we'll talk about them and we'll drop them in as we go. But while we're live across the podcasting services around the globe, so feel free to subscribe on podcast service of your choice. Our agenda for today is, well, we've got a big news regarding some a bit of a QuickBooks UK meetup. Um, so I'm going to be talking about that in a little bit more detail. We've got a bit of a change to the left-hand navigation, which has caused a bit of controversy within the last couple of weeks. Um, so we'll talk about that one. Uh, we've got some new features appearing in the UK uh, product itself. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, QuickBooks Connect happened over in the US. So we've got some really good insights into there. Some bits you might not be too happy about, some of you, um, especially if you've uh, got a um, an app that deals with fixed asset register, but wow. more on that later. Um, and then we've also got um, some other changes that have come in as well. And uh, goodbye to France at the very end as well. So we'll see what happens to that one. Right then, let's start off on some kind of positive news. And it's the introduction of, or the, the announcement that came of QuickBooks Connect 2023. We already knew, well, we kind of thinking about, well, we, we kind of had this hint that it was going to happen, um, but it's all been officially announced now. We have a limited time price at the moment, £95. If you get yourself booked in by the 31st January 2023, it is accountants only, unfortunately, this one. So you, uh, you would want to be kind of getting involved in this if you are an accountant. And you can see here what to expect on the Tuesday, the 7th of March, between 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We've got plenty of stuff involved there. And here at QuickBooks Labs, we've got a little bit of um, extras we want to be bringing in there as well. Hopefully getting some form of podcast-esque type content while we're there and we'll see how it goes so who wants to go first well everyone excited everyone got those tickets booked tickets booked bags are packed i'm ready to go bags are packed already <laughs> i'm more excited because this is like a week before i then fly to mauritius so it's like this is the start of my free week of enjoyment <laughs> <laughs> nice 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 um, yeah it, i'm just looking forward to getting a quickbooks connect info in person in face to face again it's it's such a good day with such a good party at the end that yeah i've missed it yeah it's gonna be good isn't it it's gonna be good what do you think to the location though actually you remember last time we were there it was the last time i had an in-person event wasn't it what did you think to it um i can't remember if that i if that's the one that i did go to because there was one oh, that I missed, missed this one. one yeah. That I missed, but I, um, yeah, I can't remember if I went to that one or not. I'm you were not, training, I, weren't you? You were yeah, training in Birmingham. I, I, yeah, 
I might have missed that one. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It, I'm pretty sure that was the one that you missed, unfortunately. Uh, but the location's pretty cool. Um, is this the place where ZeroCon was this year, last year? Yeah, it was. Yeah, last year? Yeah, last year. And it, and it won't be there this year because ZeroCon's not going ahead this year. <sighs> bum, bum, bum. Do you, you know, know why? No, 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 no. no. ZeroCon for the UK is cancelled. Or well, it wasn't scheduled, to, so it can't be cancelled. But yeah, yeah. So Ooh. I've known for a while from an inside source at Zero, but it's now someone mentioned it on LinkedIn, so I can now mention it. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, no, that, that's what we wanted. To do. Yeah, I did not know that. I mean, that's uh, oh, okay. Well, it was a bit of a disaster from last time, wasn't it? Just because of the heat yeah. and stuff, wasn't it? It was. It. Uh... They're all still recovering from heat exhaustion. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the same location. Although last time we were there, I don't remember any kind of issues or any because it it was the year after the um, Beast from the East, wasn't it? That, yeah. That was out, so yeah, twenty eighteen yeah, yeah. was uh, twenty nineteen was at Billingsgate for QuickBooks Connect. Twenty eighteen yeah. was the Print Works, which had no heating until about the last hour of the last day. Yeah, that was chattering teeth moment, wasn't it? If ever there yeah. was one. Uh, but no, I just got all good things about uh, Billingsgate. I thought it was a nice, nice little location. Um, and as we kind of said before, there's, a, there's some really good um, places to stay as well. So what I have for my team, uh, it's just over the road, there's a nice little Premier Inn um, on there. So really good value, really easy to get to. So, yeah, highly recommended. And, yeah, we'll be seeing Tom there and the rest of the QuickBooks team. So we're definitely excited to uh, see what's in store. We've not had any announcements yet of any of the speakers or anything, like any of the big name speakers or anything, but I'm sure when we get that details, we'll be passing it over to you. So, yeah, do yeah, I, take advantage of that for first January. Um, don't, I want anyone that's holding off until the speakers are announced to get their ticket, I wouldn't bother holding off. Like QuickBooks Connect always gets some fantastic speakers. So, you know, what we had in the past, we've had Tim Peak. Um, did we have Tim Peak? Mm. Or was that zero? Was that Alan, Alan, Sugar. <laughs> Alan Sugar, Gary Neville, Gary Neville. Um, Joe Malone. Joe Malone, she was good. She was. Um, like they get some really absolutely cracking speakers. So, uh, Bruce Dickinson, my favorite. There oh, you go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't delay getting your tickets just because the speaker lineup's not announced yet. It's always a worthwhile keynote from them, so definitely yeah. worth doing. I mean, the bit we're most excited about is going to be the new product announcements, isn't it? So, oh, what could be what could be there? One more thing that's what we're excited for, you know? They could they could finally do an Apple on us at the very end, and you know, announce one more thing. Could be. You'd hope so. Uh, whether they will or not is a different matter. We didn't get a one more thing in the US, so we didn't. No, no. But yeah, I mean, we kind of know some of the announcements. We're not, some we're allowed to talk about, some we're not. But there's still room out there for some more announcements to come through. So, and I've got um, towards the end of this, uh, towards the end of this uh, stream, I've got some announcements of, that's happened in the US, and I've got fingers crossed for some of them coming along as well. All right, let's go from kind of positive news of a wonderful um, QuickBooks Connect and getting everyone excited to a bit of controversy that happened during the last couple of weeks. Um, how many accountants out there like change? We, got, we did a poll ever. <laughs> what is it? One out of ten of us by the sounds of it? <laughs> yes, because um, QuickBooks went and made something, in my opinion, better. Um, but unfortunately, that came with a lot of uh, a lot of controversy. So I don't know who has seen this come up yet, but your favourite left-hand navigation has now changed. Um, I will go into a live one later, but this is just a just a screenshot of what it looks like now. So, what's overall thoughts? I mean, you know, we've we've seen this new left-hand navigation. We quite like the, the well the client's left-hand navigation. And now they've changed our accountant's left-hand navigation. So what's everyone thoughts on it so far? You know, just aesthetically, what do you think? You, do you like the look of it? Not like the look of it? Personally, I feel left out because I've not got it yet. <gasps> well, Controversial that <laughs> I've not got it, but never mind. But yeah, look, I like it. I must admit, I'm, I turn most things onto dark mode on my phone and stuff like that. It's easier on your eyes, especially when... You know, we spend how many hours a day in front of a computer screen? 
And when we're not in front of a computer, we're in front of an iPad or a phone or the TV. So I do find having darker menus helps me and my the strain on my eyes. So thank you, QuickBooks, for taking that into consideration. Um, but yeah, I've seen it across some of the clients. I've not had one client ring up and complain or email asking where something is. They've all gone and done the whole self-discovery thing. Um, but I have seen a lot of, without being stereotypical, grumpy old accountants and bookkeepers whinging about change. Um, so yeah, look... I think it's better. I think you can customize it. I think, yeah, it gets rid of the bits you don't need. Like if you're, you know, if I'm just looking at my one, I don't use the work tab in the, your practice. So the fact that I can hide that, you know, I don't use projects. So the fact that I can hide that, it just tidies it up. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I'm very in favor of the look and the level of customizing we can do. And I still love those bookmarks for those to take you straight into those reports that you're looking for. Yeah, exactly. I think they're fantastic. Ash, what's your opinion on the uh, the new change? Um, I'm fairly impartial, really. I mean, I don't. It's, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's quite nice. I, I don't use because I'm not an accountant and somebody in practice uh, in front of as much as you guys now. So it's um, yeah, it doesn't affect me too much. Um, it affected me in my training yesterday because <laughs> <laughs> yesterday it was there, uh, today it wasn't there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, when I when I it sort of threw me a little bit thinking, is that the client view or is that the, <laughs> is that the accountant view? So, um, that was the only thing because it was it was like that yesterday and then today it was the old way. Yeah. yeah, I think it's still rolling out, isn't it? It's obviously in phases. Um, Mr. Andrew Rainwhite is on the comments. Uh, he is asking if this is only on new licenses. It, my understanding is it's rolling out to every license. Um, and knowing how much Andy loves a change in client engager, he's not going to like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just put it out there now. Um, but yeah, it, my understanding is this will impact everyone over the next few weeks or months i don't know what yeah. the time scale is for it now i don't think they've announced it because I, I think it's still kind of uh let's see what people's reactions are um and, until you know we get a full-blown rollout on it i personally don't understand what the problem is because personally i feel like we're getting the best of both worlds we've got the old way of looking at it in terms of the you know the, the layout in terms of familiarity so we know where reports are we know where um the dashboard is for example because that is the one disadvantage of the brand new view that we've got the new um, client view is if you're familiar with quickbooks it is very difficult and jarring to kind of go from one view to another i get why people are upset about that um but on this one if anything we just get more functionality for the same kind of layout really and I get that people are a little bit find it a little bit more different in terms of the way that and I was try ironically I've just been trying to find a client so I could show exactly the functionality. But effectively when you click now or you hover over this area here, the idea is then that this screen goes to the left and then you get the ideas and the, the options there. Um, and then you can click on them and you can go to where you need to get. Whereas before you would hover over it here and it'll pop up on the right hand side and you'd find what you want to go to. So there is a slight kind of functionality change in that bit. But ultimately, we're getting the best of what that new left-hand navigation gave us. We now can, like you've already said there, you only get to edit this view. You can take things out of here. You don't want it. If you're never going to use payroll, well, just use a little button and take payroll out completely. Like, Why have a functionality there that you're never, ever going to use? You might as well make the most of getting getting rid of it. And then that bookmark section, like we've always said, is brilliant. It gives you that opportunity to create kind of almost like a workflow for you and your clients to go through. And, you know, even now we've kind of gone through and looked at this for certain clients and gone, well, you know, you're never going to use QuickBooks to the full extent, but where, what I need from you is you to go in and update these bits for me to continue doing what I need to do for you. Well, go to your bookmarks. They're the section I need you to go down and use it to build a checklist. Really easy, really simple. So it gives us more functionality um, and, 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 Ultimately, I just don't I don't know what the what the big upset of it is. 
Um, the only one slight bit that I can kind of see where people are upset is, is once you kind of go and say banking, for example, we used to be able to go to the top here and then be able to click between our little areas. So you want to go to your rules or to your tags or to your seats or whatever it's going to be. Well, you can't do that now. Um, it's all kind of gone on that left-hand navigation, hasn't it? You have to go back there. Um, but apart from that, I don't really know what people are so upset for. A lot of the negativity is around the fact that, well, why are we wasting time updating left-hand navigation when it wasn't broken and we could have fixed stuff that was broken? But I'm not sure how much that, <laughs> that argued thing. I mean, you're both developers now. Like, that's not quite how development works, is it? Let's be honest. No, I mean, they're always, look, let's face it, QuickBooks has got a bloody big team all over the world. They're going to have numerous projects and they're just going to finish, have different finishing times and rollout times. And just because they've done this left-hand navigation bar change doesn't mean they're, also, they're not working on other stuff as well. So, yeah, you know, you've, they're always talking to both small businesses and accountants and in that research, there must have been enough of an indication to justify the investment in changing the left-hand menu. They perhaps just haven't asked the minority that are also nine out of ten times the most vocal people when it comes to change. Right. What do you think, uh, Ash? Do you think it's for the better? And you know, do you, do you think they the kind of they're going to have missed out on other opportunities by doing it this way? Or no, but like. I... Uh, Johan said, I mean, you know, the, we've got hundreds of developers, probably more, more than that, that are working in different clumps. So I wouldn't, you know, for because I know what some accountants will be jumping up and down saying, why are they fit? Why have they done this when they could have actually been doing something else that they want? Yeah. Um, makes absolutely no odds because there'll be a team of developers that are just purely or you know concentrating on tax related issues there'll be a team that are you know like concentrating on stuff like this which is how fluffy and colorful does something look <laughs> pretty yeah. look. um and so yeah it, it's, it's like all things you know we, you, like when i first used it um so then one of my client files it's it's got the new and I thought I wasn't over, I wasn't overly keen with the way that the things expanded, but I wouldn't cry about it. <laughs> it's just, it still works. It still does what I want it to do. So, yeah. yeah, and it's not like this has come out of the blue. How many? How long have we been talking about this for now? In various podcasts at various points, um, you know, they, people are saying, "Oh, we weren't warned." It's like. To be fair, if, if QuickBooks flooded the world of social media with videos that this is coming soon, you still probably wouldn't have been feel like you've been warned because you probably wouldn't have seen those videos or sat and pressed play on those videos to see it. So, yeah, what can you do? Yeah. And I, I personally think as well, the fact that they're changing this must mean, and we don't know one way or another on this one, but it must mean there must be something down the line that this update is for to enable whatever it is down the line you know oh, new feature whatever it's going to be new new ui or whatever it's going to be there's got to be this is part and parcel of a bigger picture hasn't it and i think that's what we kind of forget all you'll be lot. laying the foundations for something because like like we whenever we do anything in client engager we've made a few adjustments recently so the menu layouts and drop down boxes because we know what's coming in the future and we know what we need to plan for now and we just build it into what we're doing while we're doing it. So there'll be a bigger thing at the end of the tunnel for this. Yeah, yeah. And, and we cannot wait for it. All right, that's the left-hand navigation. We'll keep an eye on it. And when I've actually got a file that I can actually show you, um, I will show you. The only ones I've got are live files, and it's probably not fair to uh, <laughs> give away client data. And that's a, there's only so much you can hide when you <laughs> put those sort of screens on. on there's there. only so many times the office, Information Commissioner's office can say, oi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to the other announcement last month, which was QuickBooks Connect in the US of A. So, obviously, we're all excited about QuickBooks UK. It's going to be 
a great event. We're going to get some great announcements. I can guarantee that. But what happened over in the US? Well, they brought out some really cool little innovations. Um, and I think we'll just talk about a couple of them now. So first one was this whole idea of um, a brand new improved trans transaction for management. And it's basically going to go down the rule section within QuickBooks and make it even more useful to us. So the idea here, and if you, there's a whole video that you guys can watch, and I'll make sure the link's there. Well, the whole idea here is that they want to make sure the match inside of things works even better than it does before. And crucially, they mention auto matching as well. And when they say auto matching, what they're trying to push towards is the idea that if you've got a supplier and it's sat there waiting to be matched, there'll be an option where you can have, have it to automatically match. I do hope it's only an option. I hope there's a tick box to say, yes, auto match or don't auto match, because in some circumstances we know we still want that control and we want to do it. But most of the time, just having the ability for QuickBooks to be able to see a vendor or a customer, see that the payment's been received and automatically apply that, that's got to be a good thing, right? I don't see anyone saying that that's a bad thing. Yeah, if I, if there's a if there's efficiency and automation there to be had, and we're happy that that comes with accuracy, then yeah, that's got to be a good thing. Yeah, I absolutely love the idea. What about you, Ash? Do you think uh, this will bring some much needed extra to the rules and and matchmaking? Yeah, I suppose it's what this is a difficult one. They're actually seeing it operating you it's like all the things that you sometimes they sound really good until you actually have them working so i'm not um yeah I, i'd like to see it in place first like demonstrated yeah yeah um i think if i just go did they show a little bit of it i think of something else uh no they never, didn't show a little bit of this one so we've not seen how this one works yet one thing we have seen, and we'll see it later, is one of the other announcements, and this was revenue recognition. Now, this is only for QuickBooks Advance, um, but I've seen a bit of a... Is it this screen that brings it up? Um, okay, that's a terrible view of it. But yeah, um, revenue recognition was announced during the, um, during the thing. I've got a little bit to show you later exactly how that looks. But QuickBooks Advance, trying to push down a whole bit of a different way of looking at it, a little bit of a, you know another bit to add to that QuickBooks Advance um, element to it, revenue recognition is something we've been shouting for for a long time, isn't it? I know, Ash, you uh, played around with it a little bit, didn't you, with NetTracker? You've kind of been able to introduce it in one of your updates lately. Yeah, so we've got revenue recognition, really. Um, we've got another release to do soon where the uh, um, transaction will be, you know, just exactly per the date because at the moment, if you just you just can split it over a desired number of months, which is no good if you just want 16 days of one month and 15 days in, a, in another month. So that, you know, that's, you know, that's coming. Yeah, well, it's done. It's just not released. <laughs> yeah, because we've just got a couple of little tweaks to do. Awesome. Awesome. And it, do you reckon it's something that's um, kind of a lot of people are after? Is it something you, is that why you developed in the first place? Um, yeah, well, I mean, it's like a lot of things that um, probably at the moment, so many accountants like yourselves would probably look at you know, revenue annually at the end of the year and make the appropriate adjustments of what's probably just been invoiced in the last month um, or what was invoiced at the beginning of the year that was on an annual basis and creating loads of reports and then working out what the adjustments should be. Um, so some people are quite happy just to make those adjustments once a year. In ten years' time, <laughs> um, if people, if um, let's say, make a tax digital eventually ever happened for a corporation tax company, controversial. Uh, <laughs> I say like, if it if, if it ever happens because they quite just think, oh, sod it, it's not worth the aggro. Um, but if <laughs> if it was, then you think, well, actually, I need to make sure those adjustments happen every month. So that things are in, in line. Um, yeah, if you're a, the size, depending on the size of the business, I mean, I guess, you know, uh, Intuit are looking at advanced for those larger businesses. And really, regardless of whether it's make, you've got making tax digital, if you've got a substantial business, they generally need to run a report every month mm. or every quarter 
especially if you've got a bank loan or a sizable you know bank overdraft in place the bank want that report to say are oh, you going to basically meet your obligations you know what's your what's your income actually going to look like when you're going to expect to receive that cash in so if that's the case then you should be you know recognizing your income within the correct months and reporting for it correctly not just having a, a year 12 adjustment but a month 12 adjustment but yeah so yeah that's yeah that's why we've why we've got it in place really for those larger larger businesses yeah and, and that's why it really does make a difference doesn't it and and johan what, what do you think then another feature for us to try and push quickbooks advance i suppose it's uh not a bad thing is it is this what you expect yeah. <laughs> Kind of focus on it's it's interesting isn't it with quickbooks advance because the people that are quickbooks are leaning on the accountants and bookkeepers that quickbooks are leaning on to push quickbooks advanced perhaps haven't for the last five or so years been working with those size businesses that need these kind of features so it is a whole new market like for us we're only just starting to venture into these two three four five 10 million pound businesses because we've never really felt we had the right tool to deal with anything over a 2 million turnover business. Um, so we've now got that tool and that tool is now being added to and we are coming across things like businesses that need things that we've not had to really do. Like oh, members of my team are going, oh, I've not done that since college or university or whenever I did my qualification. Like yeah. accruals and you know, I used to do monthly accruals and adjustments and stuff and revenue recognition back in the old job, which was a £50 million a year turnover business. Uh, and we had to do accurate monthly management reports reflecting the true performance. So, it, yeah, it's a bit rusty for me. But if we're getting tools built into advance that powers that, then fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, and it's not... nice to see that they're using Ash and NetTracker as a thought leader and trendsetter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> more on that in a moment, I think. Um, <laughs> we, what I think is, is interesting is the fact that, um, it, although it's not something that we've been shouting as a problem, when you look at kind of what other people have saying back to desktop and back to um, QuickBooks, it is one of those bits that was missing, wasn't it? So yeah. you can kind of see that that's good, isn't it? We're starting to really close the gap between what desktop can do and what it can't do um speaking of which one of the other announcements was a much better stock analysis as well so it's really difficult to see i know on the screen but you can see here they've kind of got a much bit better look at what's happened to stock and it's connecting automatically to sales channels as well so this could be an absolute game changer for some of them i think again it's advanced only from what i can tell um but this feature will be lovely to play around with. And it seems to be taking a lot of the goodness from Trade Gecko or what is now QuickBooks Commerce, um, that solution there, and bringing that in. So, yeah, they're having a lot more integrations with sales channels like Shopify, eBay, Amazon, all those sort of things, which we definitely want to see. Um, and then having a much better stock management solution here, we've been kind of asking for that for a long time, haven't we? It's, uh, it's definitely something that... I personally think it's going to be a much bigger um, chance for you to bring in those people to QuickBooks Advance if this is a QuickBooks Advance feature, because I know a lot of people who do struggle with their with their stock management side of things, and this could be a great solution for it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think a lot of people look at QuickBooks Advance and go, oh, it's for £2 million plus businesses, or whatever you want to put it as a criteria. But I think a lot of people forget that actually it's not just your turnover, that the reason we say that turnover is because that by that point you've got so many complexities you need advanced tools and yeah. actually any e-commerce business that has even maybe a quarter of a million pound turnover a year but has such if that quarter of a million pounds is made up of five pound transactions by that point you need advanced stock tracking and control exactly so, yeah it advanced has got so many opportunities to speed up and make life a lot more efficient in high volume transactional companies with stock coming in and out so anything like this is a bonus definitely and ash i know you put a lot of kind of um workarounds everything into your last book didn't you in terms of 
update uh, like ways to get the most out of stock and everything else but actually having the stock better in the first place is only going to be better for everyone isn't it oh yeah absolutely yeah, i mean it, the 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 stock in quickbooks yeah it's been it's been needed to be updated for well since we started using it basically <laughs> yeah, <pretty much. laughs> um, it's, it's not as good it's not as um you know robust and uh, uh with the amount of features that you had in desktop yes exactly which has always been a reason why people have, st have struggled to make the move and they make the jump it's that stuff yeah, mainly in the us i would say yeah the other big update was the sales sync in real time we've already kind of talked about this a lot um but it is nice to actually see what it looks like and everything else again not the greatest um uh, video that they've put here but you can see here you've got all that's open to ship to back order closed it's giving you a lot more detail than i was expecting i thought it would just be completed items but it is more looking more of a a sales system and a sales management system than it is just your typical let's just press uh, a button and, and make sure that any income that's related to that sales channel comes in it looks like it's about a management of it as well so that yeah absolutely love the idea of this um and then you can connect connect your shopify your amazon um ebay and all those sort of things and they're just going to flow nicely into quickbooks uh, again third party apps are out there uh, but having it built directly in i think it's just going to be absolutely lovely to see one of the other innovations we're talking about apps as well is this new holistic view of connected data and apps and this is something i've definitely been kind of crying out for for a long time the more clients that we're pushing to all these different apps and the more of that ecosystem we want to get connected we need to have confidence that these apps are still working that they're not got any problems not any issues and just having this sort of dashboard here i know it's america only now but we need to get this into the uk asap in my opinion the idea that we can see if there's any issues when it was last updated if you know what apps are actually connected and how they're doing and i'm hoping here a little settings button so you can actually make some adjustments to that app on the fly yeah, this is going to be really, really nice to see. Um, what, what do you guys think of this uh, this view that, that's coming in? I think, um, a going back to that sales process. Yeah, QuickBooks is obviously identified online selling, order processing is that's where e-commerce is where the future is for a large amount of its customers. Um, and that then leads into the requirement of apps to talk to things. So to have all of that planned and easily managed is a huge benefit for everyone, I think. So, yeah, no, it's good to see. You're starting to see the direction they're going in, put it that way. Nice one. What about you, Ash? What do you think to the uh, app view? Do you, yeah, do you think it's quite nice. Like, yeah. Yeah. For your app, it'll be useful, wouldn't it? You would have thought? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's quite a nice feature. It looks a lot neater and cleaner from what the what you had before. Because yeah. it, um, because that was in the client view, wasn't it? Because accountants have had something similar for a while, but not quite, yeah. as, quite as good. Well, we just get a list, don't we? All we get is a list of what apps are there. Um, and the idea of this one is that you can kind of see if there's any issues or errors. So for like um, um, fix asset, uh, for a net tracker, for example, it could come up with an error saying it's tried to you know, post depreciation or whatever and it's failed or whatever it's going to be. It gives that okay. confidence, doesn't it? Because at the moment, the only way for you to know if those systems have worked is you have to go to the either the app itself or you've got to go finding a, the journal entry you're expecting to see or whatever it's going to be so just having that one view where you can go actually yeah, all my apps are working no problems whatsoever great oh this there's a problem with this particular app and i've got to go sort it i think that's going to be quite useful yeah and hopefully as well for you guys it gives more people a chance to see apps as well because if they're kind of going to that screen and seeing those apps and going oh yeah this is working for me i'm saving a lot of time hopefully then it goes actually what other apps can I use? You know, what are you know? Maybe there's an opportunity there to kind of show other apps that that people are using and kind of have that sort of thing and and, and give that opportunity there. Because I think the more it's one of those in it of all apps out there. Once people know about it more, then they can they can see what the benefits are. Nice. 
Cool. Um, there was an update for Business Network and the fact that that's going to be coming out sooner. So I'm looking forward to getting some more information on exactly how that works. We spoke about it in previous, um, in the last pod actually, and it was all about the fact that the idea that if you've got two clients or two customers or two users of QuickBooks, shall I say, then there's the idea of connecting them together. So if you send information between one and the other, they should appear on both sides. If you update one address, you should be able to update the other. So that whole business network idea um, is is good. And I saw an update actually that they've, they've even added more and more people to the network. It's still US only, which is a shame. But you know, when it does come to UK, it's definitely something be worthwhile having a look at. Um, then uh, there was a new training portal shown as well. So I definitely got my uh, view and got me, me excited on that one. Um, and then finally, there was oh no, there's also a HR solution as well coming in the US. So maybe that's sign of things to come um although i think ours is very much dependent on what key pay wants to do isn't it so i suppose it's we're kind of just you know we're, we're gonna wait and see what happens on that one um but then they announced um fixed asset register so we have no views no looks no anything else but what do you think to that one ash what's your initial reactions to it was it it was going to come at some point sort of idea yeah um I think I have heard someone that so it's, it's not actually in product yet then. Not yet, no. And was it advance only or did I make that one up? I think there was, it, it might only be one of the higher tiers that it was coming to. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I won't be lying. I mean, I would be, you know, you know I can't say the word without swearing. So I wouldn't be very happy, but uh, it is what it is, I guess. Um, I and mean, that's one of the reasons why we started to build other features in. So it's yeah. not just the fixed assets. So we've got the other tools and other tools to come as well. So, yeah, it'd be interesting if it is advanced only. Um, that might work in our favour because there's still a lot of companies that don't want to pay for an advanced licence. Same with that revenue recognition as well, isn't it? It's like... Yeah, yeah. You, you'll, you'll find people not willing to jump up to advance, but actually having the ability to do some deferred income or whatever they're going to use it for could be quite, quite useful. Yeah. Um, I suppose we don't know enough about it to, to yeah, say. I did see a post um, on one of the Facebook groups. I think someone had said about uh, fixed assets and then uh, another, someone else had got put, our, put a link to our page of that there and someone had said or something mentioned at uh, QBC and someone else said yes but uh, it was also mentioned about five years ago so <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of things don't um, always sort of think okay they've said that because like we've had you know in here we, with the you know quick work banking that we thought yeah. was coming yeah and all of a sudden it was scrapped so we'll see it could be that they, they might have decided to work with another, because there's like two or three fixed asset type partners on the app store, and they might have decided to, to go and work with one of those and just bring it in behind the scenes. I, 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 my gut feeling is if they've spent this long or they've waited this long for it, they've, surely they've been building it in-house, aren't they? Probably, because, yeah. But otherwise, it, it's yeah. Like, yeah. But you, you sort of think, well... You've got a team of two people that built ours within six months, rough, rough, rough thing, a fully working app, uh, and then another couple of years making tweaks and adjustments to it. So if two people, so that's one developer and one ideas person and tester, can do that amount, and Johan knows the sort of stuff as well, you know, if that one person, you know, a couple of can do that in that short amount of time, why does it take a billion dollar company um, with hundreds of developers uh, reached, you know, and getting advice, possible advice from thousands of users? Why is it not even in the product? Mm. Mm. I mean, really, in, in theory, it should have been in there from day one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What do you think, Johan? Are you uh, sceptical about it, or how do you feel? No, I mean, look, I think there's always going to be a place for NetTracker, because 
All right, we're QuickBooks pretty much only. So if they had a fixed asset register that worked across all QuickBooks licenses, regardless of level, and it had all the functionality we needed from it, then fine. You know, we probably would look at it. But the majority of accounting and bookkeeping firms operate across multiple software platforms, aka Zero Sage and QuickBooks. So do you want to teach your staff three different fixed asset register platforms? Or do you want to teach them one in the form of NetTracker, knowing that it does the job on all of them? Mm. I know which one's more efficient for my, as running a business to train my team on. Um, and, you know, will QuickBooks do what Apple does, for example? So they're going to put this feature into QuickBooks Advanced for now, and over the years it will trickle down into QuickBooks Pro and stuff like that. So you know, yeah. Apple put all their new stuff in Quick in their Apple Pro phones, and then it filters down over the years into the normal iPads and the normal iPhones. Um, so yeah, I, until it has 100% of the functionality that Ash has got in NetTracker, and it's in every QuickBooks license, and every single client is on QuickBooks, I don't see it running away with Ash's market. But I could be wrong. <laughs> but yeah, I think there's going to be always space for because like QuickBooks. If we take the receipt capture, mm. in theory, at the very highest level, QuickBooks has receipt capture. So why do you need Dex and Auto Entry? Well, actually, we all know the receipt capture is there. It, it's okay for a one-man band. From an accounting firm point of view, it's completely inefficient and a nightmare to use. So actually, yes, you want a more advanced tool in the form of Dex or auto entry to make that time saving. So I think QuickBooks is always very good at with their any of their features as being like what I call gateway features. Like they get you into the idea of it. But if you then want a more performance orientated, more efficient, more powerful tool to actually deliver the job properly, that's when you go and look at their app partners in the form of NetTrack. Yeah, that's my philosophy behind it. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I suppose it's one of the things that I was always sort of half expecting it to. Um, so we have to open up our zero connection back up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking about that anyway. Um, but, but the zero is an already good example, though, isn't it? Because zero already has been; they have since day one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yet you still get customers on zero, don't you? So it, you know, and people were connecting to zero. So yeah, I think that's a good good analogy to what you know, I was saying there about the gateway to it, isn't it? Yeah. The, the number of zero accounts I look at, especially for due diligence, I was just doing due diligence on a courier company this week. They've got zero. It's oh, fantastic. This can be so much easier. Go in thinking, oh, they've got twenty vans. Right. The zero asset register is going to be fantastic here. They've not put any of it on the asset register. And it's just like, well, you can put the tool there. It doesn't mean anyone's going to bloody use it. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. So, yeah. it's It's been much needed. I think it should have been there from day one. And a lot of accountants and bookkeepers are going to be saying, well, why is it taking so long? Um, but I doubt it's going to have the automation, the efficiency, the re ability to recognise that things have been added via the balance sheet and highlight those to be added as onto the asset register and stuff in the same way NetTracker does. So, yeah, we won't be dropping our NetTracker subscription anyway. Thanks, Johan. We'll see, we'll see what happens in next, year, next year. Brilliant. All right, okay. So I finally found the, just circling around a little bit, what the revenue recognition looks like. So here's a little screenshot for you. Does what itself on the tin, doesn't it? Um, we've got recognition date, liability account, amount recognized, and income account. So, and we're splitting it over for you. Looks all right, looks fine, doesn't it? it looks like it's a fact, it's built in there and has that kind of on screen present presence, does give you kind of the opportunity to do it. And by looks of it as well, you can add the product and service and then view rec revenue recognition just there. So, yeah, seems all right, seems like, yeah. Not a bad little implementation for it, I don't think. All right. 
Um, we have some other. Um, I'm just wondering, what's the name of that large software accounting software company? Um, Salesforce. No, that's your name. So obviously not not Sage Zero QuickBooks. There's a there's a. Uh, they come out. They, they were they were talking about what was it? Um, scaling new heights. Yeah. Someone was talking about revenue recognition. It looks uh, similar to what. The other accounting software does is basically there's a link there. It should this be, you know, is this invoice? Is it going to be? It should it be deferred? Uh, you literally, and you literally tick a box to say yes, this is deferred over how many months, and then it, it, it makes the adjustments for you. Um, um, I'll have to, let me just do that. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah carry on. <laughs> I'll, 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 it'll come back to me in a minute. Well, we've got some other updates as well. We've got the. Um... Um, well, they're saying here this is going to be an update to the banking screen and the ability for payees to be assigned much more efficiently. So in their example here, they're saying that only one out of all of these transactions were actually already assigned a payee. So that's going to be good, isn't it? I mean, payees become so crucial at the moment in terms of um, some of the new features. So we've got the assigning category feature. We've got things like um, when you look at your... Uh, that error checker and it tells you then um, it issues it can find, stuff like that for the AI and everything else. So the more we can kind of help with the pay side of things and the more we can kind of get that consistency, the better really. And it's just using that machine learning, it's using the item there to bring it on. It does scare me that they're showing this screen here. So for those who don't know, this is the the newish screen that I keep seeing popping up on the on the bank area where they get rid of the full review, reviewed and excluded area, and it becomes more of a list. I personally really don't like this. I know we talked about it. You don't need that change, Aaron. I can't <laughs> actually like change, but no. This one just doesn't do it for me. But yeah, if that's yeah. the future, that's the future. Yeah, I know what you mean. We'll have to, it's one of those ones where at first glance, it looks horrible, doesn't it? So, um, <laughs> it's, it's not only jarring to use, but also it just invites errors because you know you can easily miss one of these that you haven't reviewed and there's that you have to do an actual filter to bring it in and there's kind of little options there so but that's one for another another moan for another day i think but yeah but the you know the fact that they're improving this functionality bringing that in it's all, all good isn't it and, and yeah and if this is the future of accountancy of quickbooks then yeah we'll see if we uh, like it or not any thoughts on it I, I'll i hold judgment until I've been able to play with it. I mean, at the moment, it irritates me that I have to click drop down. I click on the transaction, it dropped down. And like, oh, okay. Like, if it if it speeds up my data entry process and makes it more efficient, then it's a win for me. That's your opinion. Yeah, I mean, I was trying to think, is that I've never used Zero, but is this kind of being a little bit similar to the way yeah. a Zero transaction is? Yeah, very, very, very similar, very similar, and okay. similar to QuickBooks Help Employed as well. It's kind of that yeah. sort of task, isn't it? I mean, so I think, yeah. Of, yeah, I mean, it could possibly once you get used to it and you've you've worked out some of the the little bits, it, it might might be quicker. But you sort of look at it at the first glance, you think, mm, it doesn't look it. But, you know. My fear, though, and it's the same fear we have with QuickBooks Self Employed, is it, it's how obvious you make this view to you've confirmed and you completed that transaction. We had a client uh, who came to us absolutely fuming because they thought that we deleted all their data from QuickBooks um, and they were having this big. Um, thing about it and all that happened is their bank had disconnected but they didn't realize that they didn't just have to add the bank but they had to then confirm and, and move them from the full review tab to the review tab so when the bank disconnected and all their data went in their view they'd lost all their data and it was all over and you know and, and everything else and that's now that's when it's very obvious that you're in the full review tab you've got to move them to the review tab if you have something like this my fear is that people are just going to see that and go oh yeah well my data's in there look t-mobile's t-mobile done but they haven't really realised that they still need to actually process the transaction and that's mm. what it is. So yeah. that's what what my fear would be of it. 
I think from a performance metric, I, I wonder if this will be better because for me to assign a PayYE or a category at the moment, I have to click on the transaction in the bank. I have to wait for it to drop down. So I'm in Scotland. like I'm in Edinburgh right now. I've got <laughs> fantastic Wi-Fi here. But an hour north, you're lucky if you're dealing with 10 megabits a second. Yeah, yeah. So to have every every animation that you see go through QuickBooks requires data speed. So to drop down the window, then to click and drop down a drop list, it all adds up. So if that's one less drop down or animation that's going on in my screen, which means my processing of the bank data is quicker, then yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, you're up for it. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah. The only yeah. thing I, I like, or hopefully there'll be a filter or something, is that when you're dealing with transactions like we do at the moment, when you've done, when you when you've completed them, they're gone. Yeah. The, screen is, the screen is blank. You know that. You get that satisfaction, don't you? Yeah. Easy. All of my bank transactions have been dealt with. I've got a blank for yeah. review. Yeah. So having exactly. that screen that's constantly there, I don't know. I mean, there is filter options, so you could just filter for non, you know, uh, non com or confirm items or however they want to, or unreviewed items, however they want to phrase it going forward. But yeah, the other thing that I absolutely hate about this one is that you lose at the top here um, the bank balance and the bank to QuickBooks bank to uh, the bank balance in the bank and bank balance to QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. That goes completely because the idea then is you wouldn't need that if you've got kind of a one view sort of idea, but. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we shall see. Um, mm. Okay, uh, there was one other update I wanted to bring in before we leave today. Oh, it's this one here. And I know, um, Jan, you've got some views on this one. Me? This is in America. And in America, we have your normal invoicing, and you can go through and see what it looks like and edit it as you want. But on the right hand side, we have payment options with a little tick box of credit card bank paypal and room down here for some more so you know what do you guys think to this little uh breakdown here and how it looks and yeah i don't think there's any anyone who says it's a bad thing does it and even says here not just paypal but there's i can't quite read what that one is but there's another another payment platform there as well so open it up to all the pla platforms in theory right yeah i think that's great um, depending on how much the charges are. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where certain certain providers out there, like Cresco, can be very competitive indeed. <laughs> I think from a... Not necessarily from an accountant's point of view, because we're fairly used to that whole line by line, entering the information, not knowing what that looks like on the invoice, just let it, the invoice populate and send, that's fine. Yeah, from a yeah. business user's point of view, the fact that you are technically entering the data on the format of your invoice here, I really like that. I think this is a really nice looking user interface and user experience. Yeah. And I like the fact that they've taken all the options of things and put them to one side rather than dotting them around the screen and you're missing things. And if this payment option thing can be opened up in their API so that Presco uh, I walk a pay, whoever it is you want to use, yeah. can link into that. So I walk a pay rang me very excitedly today. We've just launched our QuickBooks connection and you can connect us to QuickBooks. Cool. Okay, let's have a look. Let's do this while you're on the phone to me. So, okay, I've connected it. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Bring up the FAQs that I walk a pay have. Yeah, you, you're still just copying a bit of text and a link into the email or onto the info box on the invoice, which is exactly the same problem that Cresco have got. It looks spammy. It looks fraudulent. It doesn't look professional compared to a pay now button. Zero allows you to use the pay now button and to plug in whichever payment provider you want into the pay now button. QuickBooks needs to sort it out. I'll stop yeah. there. <laughs> right. 
and and we have got speculation that maybe there's some sort of PayPal exclusivity or something. We don't know. There could be anything. There could be, you know, contractually there could be a reason why this has happened. But it's been a long time. It's been PayPal. So you know, let. It doesn't seem to matter who we ask, how higher up in the ranks we ask it in QuickBooks. The answer is, let me look into that, and you'll never get a response or a reply. No. Whether that's because America doesn't tell the UK people that, or I don't know. But it is becoming the biggest bugbear for me at the moment because my clients can't be competitive by you taking PayPal payments compared to people like Stripe, Iwaka, Cresco. They all do extremely cheap, if not free, bank payments. Mm -hmm. My clients can't compete with... If I had a client using exactly the same type of business, same transaction volumes, et cetera, and their competitor next door was doing exactly the same thing but through zero, my client can't be as competitive or profitable because QuickBooks won't allow them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it boils down to. Yeah. And, and you, you know, we do get the added functionality of, you know, making it super simple. The pay now button means it definitely, you know, it's always going to go through there. You pay by Apple Pay. You can do all of that functionality in QuickBooks. Don't worry about that because that's all been dealt with by PayPal. Mm -hmm. But, you know, not opening it up means that we just lose out on so much added functionality. And it's, it's a shame, isn't it? Because, like I said, we can see how simple it is. And, he, and even, uh, even Sage are given the option to do that as well, even though they've got their own Sage Pay functionality now. Um, pretty sure they can look at as well. Um, Do we need to take placards to QuickBooks Connect and stand outside <laughs> on strike until they give it to us? Payment options over here. We'll, we'll just take a photo of this. <laughs> sure. yeah. We want this now. <laughs> we want Cresco. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Perhaps, perhaps we ought to oh, it's, it's, it's try and sell our, our strike integration because we built our own internal strike integration between our admin tools and QuickBooks. So any invoice that's created in the background, it creates the invoice in QuickBooks between our admin tools. And then if we, well, automatically, you know, payments are collected, but then if someone pays later or they just put their card details in and I've just not automatically taken it, I can just click pay now and it will take, it will, take that payment from the card and it will update all of the entries and that's going through Stripe. Awesome. Which is, it's a great workaround, isn't it? I suppose it's just, it's not as simple as create an invoice and press send, is it? That's, yeah. that's what the people are missing out on, isn't it? So yeah. That pay now button should be powered by whatever pay facility. Yeah. Have you, a tip by the here, you, choose. you pick what you want it to be. Yeah. Some people will still do PayPal because it's convenient and it's a, a, a known brand that people can can quite quite trust. But, you know, it's that, isn't it? It's that yeah. um, and also, just just before we move on as well, we've got email view, PDF view, and pay all view. I'm not quite sure. I suppose that's an American term, isn't it? But whatever that view is, that'd be a, a nice uh, nice to have there. But like like you said, just seeing it like in this format does doesn't work quite well i think and uh, yeah and especially with those payment options on the right hand side absolutely loving it all right how long we got oh we're just over there's one more big update i wanted just to quickly bring in and it's something we will make sure we look at in a little bit more detail um but the find max functionality has had an update and what they're saying is now find match works much better than ever before with multi-currency we're not trying tried this yet, but it was always a bit of a bugbearer of ours, wasn't it, Ash? When we kind of teaching it and everything else, you had to for multi currency to work properly. You really did have to follow it and go through and, and put it through, and there was kind of a a, a step um, use case you had to follow or a, a workflow you had to follow, should I say, for you were to get the most out of multi currency. They're saying now that the fine match in foreign currency. Um, it's going to be much more powerful than it ever done before. So that's definitely something we want to be checking out, seeing if it works. But yeah, that's a, a nice little update that can uh, bring in that we could bring into uh, QuickBooks, I think. And yeah, uh, yeah, that's good because it would only ever bring through one entry at a time, wouldn't it? You couldn't mold, you know, do a multiple match. Yeah, ticking multiple ones or anything like that. 
Did we even lose a resolve difference? I can't no, remember. We didn't, we didn't have resolve difference in in foreign currency. Yeah. So yeah, um, and the fact you had to go between the two at the top. It looks like possibly the foreign currency and non currency. It looks like it's just all being there now, which yeah is what we want. It'll just uh, it's one of those things where multi currency is brilliant in QuickBooks, but it is you know if you don't follow the right uh, right way of doing it, then it can be useful. Uh, it can be um, problematic. And then finally, just another quick little update. Batch edit your client auto bank rules. So now you have the option to, if you want to revise your auto add preference on the list of client bank rules, you can now do it all at once in banking, select multiple rules and turn off auto add for all of them. So instead of having to go through individually, you can then turn them all on and off as needed. So yeah, nice little uh, updates to that one. Um, final bit then, just we'll finish off on... Um, Goodbye, QuickBooks France. It was uh, oh, wow. yeah, well, yeah, it's neat, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so QuickBooks has said bye bye to France. Um, no, we, uh, me and uh, Johan were talking beforehand. We did a bit of research. Can't find any major reasons why, or if there's any kind of elements to it. You know, the assumptions are the fact that you know it's never had that traction in France, has it? It's uh, it's up against um, you know the solutions out there. And everything else personally from my point of view you know it's not the worst thing in the world it does mean that you know when it comes to rest of the world which is uk is part of that rest of the world part is now that little bit smaller for us isn't it so hopefully that means we get more updates more often um and everything else that goes with it so any thoughts on france um yeah, I, don't know. It's, I think it's very very sort of, <laughs> very niche in the other way uh, for some of the France account accounting. I remember when, years ago I used to work for a firm of accountants and I had to actually uh, file a French fat return every month or every quarter. Oh, really? And had to, yeah, and I had to log into this remote desktop to this um, French version of Sage 200 or something. Um, and then, because <laughs> it was all in French, and then I had to remember looking at the balance sheet and I had to sort of look at, you know, work out what all these things meant. Um, so yeah, I have, I have some experience in French VAT, not that I can remember much, but yeah, I can imagine it would, you know, a, basically a real ball ache for, from for, for, into it, a very little reward. Um, yeah, so I can understand that. I was quite surprised because that's like two, because there was not only sort of a few months ago, it was India that went. Well, that's exactly, yeah, yeah. Quick exit, and I thought. You know, I was quite surprised at that, but then again, you know, India again has probably got some very, very niche tax rules that they've already got things in place for. Um, so, you know, do you know, from I guess from in trip being to the developer at the end of the day, um, has to think, well, how much time can I invest that's really going to affect that small amount of our customer base yeah. whereas probably all of the rest of the countries are also pretty similar you know have a very similar sort of way way things work so i mean, i imagine that's why yeah i mean we were going to launch a quickbooks labs french edition but we'll just yeah we'll just put that on ice for now and uh C'est la vie. <laughs> Exactly. All those hours on Duolingo wasted. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get ready. So far, I can say Le Fenetra, which is all about a window. So, you know, <laughs> at least I'll find a use for it one day. One day. And with that, I think that is uh, that's the end of this year's or the first episode of this year's Quick Books Lab. So, very thank you, or big thank you to both of you two for coming along. Um, we do have a really big guest, hopefully, lined up in the next one. So, tease more on that later um thanks for all the questions that came in and all the comments that we've had throughout the show really appreciate it everyone uh, don't forget to follow us on facebook to so join us live on any future episodes or join one of our youtube channels um ash johan do you have you got anything you want to kind of promote push ash you want to go first any kind of any new updates on that track or anything um, no, nothing too much at the moment. I just said the daily calculation stuff should be released soon, and then as soon as that's done, there'll be some videos out. But um, as well as the updated, you know, help and support pages, because they're 
I was just reviewing those last night, so that they'll go probably live in the next release as well. Nice one. Any any music videos planned? Any more guitar solos? <laughs> no, no more music videos for, uh, uh, for a while. Um, may, maybe later. Maybe we'll get maybe at Easter. I think. Well, maybe a QuickBox Connect special, you know. <laughs> Let's see if we get you on the uh, on, on yeah, the board. Perhaps I need to go busking also because um, you know QuickBooks have got their own asset register, so I've got to make my own some some more money. So I'll just sit there with the guitar case open, you know, <laughs> with like a please help. <laughs> yeah, had anything you're in you want to push? Uh, no, just the weekly ask the ex. Uh, no, ask the accountant Ooh. every Monday morning. Um, and then uh, my first accounting based speaking gig has just been announced today. I'll be speaking at Digital Accountancy Show in June. Um, all things acquisitions and growing your accounting firm via acquisition, the pros and cons. Um, so looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, no, looking forward to continuing each week's Ask the Accountants podcast. The venue looks good for that as well, doesn't it? We're at the uh, Battersea Power Station, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Be- looks electric. Hey, well done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> He's here all day, people. In fact, actually, I missed, missed that one. One sec. Just say that one again. It looks electric. <laughs> oh, it was the wrong one anyway. <laughs> you know, I even had my soundboard ready today and I never even used it. So never mind. All right, everybody. Well, it's been a great to be back. 2023, we've got some big plans for this uh, podcast. So keep an eye on it. And again, if you have a chance, why not join us live? My name's been Alpac. It's been absolutely great to see you all. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Good night. As an accountant, I've got something to say. I'd like to introduce you to a whole new way to help small business clients. It's easy as one, two, one, two, three, four. QuickBooks Online, accounting you can customize. Just sit back and relax. It works with over 300 apps. It can sync up with PayPal or Shopify. And with Fathom, you can analyze. With Fundbox, you'll get paid instantly. While Stitch Labs tracks your inventory. QuickBooks Online. QuickBooks Online. Save money and time.